Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and as you can see people, we are now back to normal. The cap is back which means normality is resuming after what has been a crazy festive period. I don't know how you spent it, hopefully it was an enjoyable one. Maybe you were sitting watching Home Alone, maybe you were singing Christmas songs, maybe you were opening Christmas presents in front of your family and they did that, oh aye that's class awkward face we are all forced to do several times a year that never gets any easier no matter how old you become on this earth but I we thankfully have a palate cleanser and I'll be honest with you man I've needed a palate cleanser because the amount of food I've consumed in the last 48 hours people honestly I should be embarrassed to even be sitting here people I lost the control of my eyelids do you realise how much food you need to eat to lose control of your eyelids people well I do and I've done it new people so I thankfully Rangers is back not only to cause it gives me something to actually watch and enjoy but it keeps me for just shoveling it down like that but it's probably quite ironic that it is Mullerwell because if there is two words in the English dictionary that these days means something very similar to a bar humbug it is none other than watching Mullerwell and I as I said it is very very fitting people because to get to the good presents, you know what I mean, the ranger side of today's video, if you will, we have to start off with the smaller presents, aka the Lynx Africa set, which is of course none other than the Mullerwell side of today's video. So without any further ado, let's dive right in to the old oppositional preview and discuss this Mullerwell side who at my current time of recording are sitting ninth in the old S. PFL. And listen, put on my playful banter, my jokes and all that to one side, looking at this Mullerwell side, it's a very, very disappointing season and it's a very, very worrying season, I imagine, if you're a Mullerwell fan because they are playing poorly and they're not picking up the results. That's a, not a good combo to have, ladies and gentlemen. And you might think to yourself, well, Mullerwell always seems to struggle or they seem to play poorly. It's been that way for the last couple of years. And you're right, people, they haven't, haven't, they haven't been great. They haven't had a lot of wins. But again, they've picked up the points in the games and that's kept them neither to the top side of the table. But this season, it's just not happening. They're not getting the rub of the green. They're not getting maybe the luck they had in previous years. They're playing poorly and again, not picking up the points and that's why they find themselves not only ninth in the league where again yes they do have a game in hand over the likes of Kilmarnock and Ross County respectfully who sit below them in the league but they've played the exact same amount of games as the team sitting rock bottom of the league which is Dundee United and it currently stands right now as five points but if the results go the way they're expected to go that could be cut down to just two and Mullerwell are really starting to get in trouble. And what's mad, people, is they came back for the winter break, maybe playing some of the best football of the season. They took a 2-0 lead again against fellow strugglers, Kilmarnock, which should have prompted them further up the table and kept them away for the dirty side, if you will. But again, somehow, some way, Mullerwell threw a 2-0 lead away in the 60th minute of the game versus 10 men Kilmarnock into a 2-2 draw where they not only threw two goals away, but they threw a vital two points in. Aye, the, the fans have let their frustrations be known. The players have let their frustrations be um, known. Van Veen's came out and complained about the team's mentality and stuff like that as well. So it'll be interesting to see how they respond to that. But see, if I'm honest with you people, that there, and I could go into this and I could speak about this, maybe there'll be a wee bit of fluff here or in a flip. But if I'm just being brutal honest between me and they, I didn't think it would make a difference if they were flying, sitting third in the league or where they are right now. For me, we know exactly how Mullerwell's going to play and I don't think their approach would change no matter what or how they were doing in the season. And that is going to be parking the bus. That is going to be time wasting. That is going to be Kelly time wasted for the first minute, probably to the very, very last, depending on the scoreline. It is going to be playing long balls. It is going to be playing for set pieces and yes it's putrid to watch that standard of football but if we're actually being fair they've actually had some good results and picked up some vital points versus Rangers over the last couple of seasons so you can't really blame them for going about and approaching that it's on Rangers to rip the game away and stop them for doing that may I add but I'll go into that in the next couple of minutes but aye anyone expecting anything different from Mullerwell I wouldn't have people it's going to be backs to the wall defending and again when they if they do start Van Veen up top where he doesn't have pace and he's no blissful he's not going to hurt us by running into the channels or doing that he is a very technical player who can bring the ball down and more vitally win set pieces that there for me directly funnels the only worries I have gone in to this game which is by far Mullerwell's biggest threat is not only set pieces 
or anything like that. It's just how dominant they are in the air. If there is one stat, if there is one thing that this Mullerwell side is good at, it's getting up there and hindering the football people. And I think that will play its part in the entire game plan. For Van Fien, Fawn doing on the deck, making dunk for Aberdeen look robust. He'll go doing all the time. Any opportunity to get on the deck so they can kick the ball into the mixer will be what you're seeing from the first whistle to the last tomorrow and I hopefully Rangers just have a couple goals by then so when the inevitable one ball does come into the mixer that it doesn't become a stinker people and that's all I've really got to say this smaller wheel side has been struggling all season long but where they've been struggling is gone forward creating opportunities scoring goals and playing a standard of football that the fans want to see what they can do tomorrow is sit in play anti-football and be happy clap for it for the fan base, so it actually suits them, this type of game, and almost plays to what they are good at, people, so I'm not expecting an easy game tomorrow, but again, it's on these Rangers players to rip it away for them, and rip up plan A, which is, of course, parking the bus, and, and there might be some people out there saying, CJ, right, you've said all this now, but what about Mullerwell's hammer-throwing tactics, have they changed too much, Then it be ridiculous, people, this side has 52 cards already, this season, it's December, we've been off a month, and they've got 52 cards already, they love to throw those hammers, they've got 50 yellows and 2 reds so far this season, so I expect a fiery, tightly contested, and a set-piece focused Mullerwell side, so I could be a very, very tricky encounter tomorrow, let's hope Rangers makes it easier on these grey hairs, but moving on to the Ranger side of today's video, which again brought, does bring smiles on the national. We do have a couple of very interesting questions, players returning, players going out, stuff like that we need to discuss in today's video, but before we actually get there, I want to just take a couple brief seconds, people, because probably when you heard the news, sorry, my camera is about to cut off right now. If you've watched this channel, you might be thinking, oh no, CG's not going to react well to this. And I can imagine there's be so many other people that heard this news and were as gutted as I am. Of course, it is the news that Stephen Davis has probably kicked his last ball for Rangers as he is now going to miss the rest of the season with a season-ending injury as he's going to have surgery in January, which is absolutely devastating, people. This is one of my idols, one of my legends, one of my favourite all-time players. And to see him possibly leave the football club like this it's just, just sayer, in my opinion, and he genuinely deserved better, but that's how cruel football can actually be, ladies and gentlemen, but I know it is a couple of days old now, and I know everyone's spoken about it, but I obviously gave you a couple of days off, that was my Christmas gift to you, by the way, but I just wanted to spend a couple of seconds just to mention it, and reference it, and just say thank you to Stephen Davis, if this is the last time we see him kick a ball for the football club, thank you for everything you gave, and all the smiles you've done, mate, you're an absolute icon, and a hero, both internationally, and and for your club and I wish him the very very best and I hope it's no the end whether it's as a player at this club or as an ambassador or as a part of the coaching staff hopefully we see Stephen Davis beyond this season at this football club so I I just wanted to mention that very very briefly before we get to some team news and some tactics because there's been a lot of conversation with Adam Devine and rightly so by the way this young laddie has been tremendous but as Michael Beale continuously tells everybody this guy isn't he a left back? He's not got a future at left back. He is right back. And even had a great line about having Tav look over his shoulder because the boy is coming. He's ready to play and everything like that. But I do want to circle back because we found out this week that Barisic has been back in training and is looking fine. So it is such an obvious question. But I want to ask you watching today's video. Now that Barisic is back, and to be fair, he is our only natural left back, do you put him right? into the starting 11 and take young Adam Devine out of it. I think the way Michael Beale was speaking, it sounds as if we might see that very, very shortly. But I just wanted to know your thoughts and opinions because to me, I'd keep the wee laddie in there. I'd keep him playing right now. I know he's not a natural left-back. I know he's not got a future in the left-back situation and that. But the laddie's playing and he's playing well. And for me, when you look at the Charlie McCanns, the Alex Lowry's and everything like that, when you see a young laddie break into the first team and play like he's played, what, not dropping below a seven? maybe even higher than that. For me, this would be a good motivation factor for them if he remains in that squad, even after the first choice left back has gone back to this football club. I'd keep him in there for another game because, again, it's not going to be the most drastically defensive-minded game of football. 
keep building them up and keep the other young players motivated that's got talent at this football club. That's what I would do. But again, I'd understand if you want Barisic in there because we're going to get a lot of the ball. We're going to get loads of crossing opportunities. And if there's one thing that Barisic does well, it's cross the football. But it isn't just the returning Barisic. Na 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 na. We found out that both Cholak, Big Tony Goals, and Kamar Roof is back in the mixer, which is absolutely massive for this football club. Not only in terms of the starting eleven, which again I imagine Cholak will be directly impacting very very shortly, but also the options for the bench and the quality and the the chance to change a game that we now have with the returning Kamar Roof. I genuinely can't be more excited about having this firepower back available now. Michael Beale has confirmed they're not 100% because they've obviously not played games but they are available for selection so I can't wait to see Tony Goals amongst this setup man with the Tillman the way he is with Kent with this complete freedom that he's now got to go anywhere and create whatever he can I can't wait to see Cholak on the end of some of the chances we are now creating on a game by game basis and even a Kamal Roof when nobody not one person can doubt a Kamal Roof's quality people it's just getting them on the part that sees only issue. Look at his record. His stats nearly stand alone in terms of how many games he's impacting, how many games he's been directly involved in winning us games. But it's getting him on the park. My only hope is his best spell, if you will, in terms of being injury free came when Michael Beal was at this football club before, so hopefully they know how to unlock it. Hopefully they've got the secret of, secret formula to unlock a Kamal Roof to keep him available because, again, if we want to be successful, we need a genuine game changer like that available for selection. So those are two massive boosts that we will see versus Mullerwell. I think we're more likely to see Tony Goals first, by the way, than Roof, just to build them back up, but they are available, as is Alan. McGregor and that brings another interesting question if you're still watching today's video after what John done versus Ross County with that phenomenal save by the way keeping yet another clean sheet do we give him another opportunity I know he was terrible versus Celtic but wasn't he terrible the other times and McGregor's not really done anything during his time back in the sticks to say oh I, it's him right there what do you do again with his goalkeeping position I'd reward McLaughlin honestly after that clean sheet and how he played with another game versus Mullerwell. That's what I would do. What would you let me know down in the comment section below? And we got another couple of updates regarding John Suter. He will be back probably by the end of January, which is big, again, for the strength and depth. Maybe not the starting 11, because does he get in over Davies and Golton? I don't think so when they're all fit. But, again, it does strengthen the position and stop us from having to play centre mids at centre back, which is something I never want to see again but aye that's it regarding the team news I know it's re very refreshing finding out injury updates people some big players coming back some play some big players missing the game what's your thoughts going in to this interesting match versus Miller now you know a little bit the facts and the feelings what are you feeling what are you thinking ahead of the game? I'll be honest with you, I'm thinking Rangers 3, Mullerwell 1. I know how ugly these games are and I know everyone is screaming it's either going to be 1-0 to Rangers with a Tillman goal. But I just fancy us to get a couple under Michael Beale with the directness and with the guys that we now have available on the bench to come off it and add quality if needed. I see goals in this Rangers team at least. I hope. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Cedron over 92. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, everyone. All the best and bye-bye.